Hey, I'm Ralph with JTLPodcast.com and I'm going to show you how to play Welcome To. This is a game for two or more players with slightly different solo rules available. Plays in about 25 minutes, designed by Benoit Turpin and published by Blue Cocker Games. You're an American architect in the 1950s trying to complete city plans and build the nicest housing estate to win. Of course, by gaining the most points. Start off by giving each player a sheet and a player aid and they'll also need something to write with. Place three city plan cards face up, one randomly from each deck labelled 1, 2 and 3. If playing the advanced game, be sure to add in the advanced city plan cards, those with an asterisk next to the number. These give you goals to achieve as you're playing the game. They are placed project side up, the side of two numbers on the bottom of the card. Shuffle the construction cards, create three piles of 27 with a number side face up. The game can begin, each turn starts with a player flipping over the top card of each construction deck. This will reveal three effects on cards that are paired with a number on the top of the card of its respective deck. For example, the middle pair here contains the swimming pool effect, paired with the number 7. Each player simultaneously will choose a pair of cards. They then must write the number on any house on any street on their sheet, and then they may apply their effect. First writing the number, they must write the number in any empty house. House numbers must go in ascending order from left to right, and numbers on the street cannot be the same. You can skip over houses creating empty spaces in the street, but you can also put two numbers that are not adjacent to each other in adjacent houses. For example, you could put a 3 in one house and 15 two houses down, should you wish. Or you could put 15 next to 3, as long as they are in ascending order left to right. If the placement rule can't be followed, cross off the top empty box in the red building permit refusal section. And once the number has been written, the player then may apply the effect of the card. If the building permit refusal box was checked because they could not place the number, they cannot apply the effect. There are six of them, let's take a look at them now. Ten pages to see, you can add or subtract one from the number you write this turn, meaning you can write from 0 to 17. Cross off one temp agency box, these are used for endgame scoring. This is the only effect that will cause you to write a number down different to that on the card that you chose. Surveyor, draw a line on any dotted line between two houses to build a fence and to determine an estate. For example, this section is fenced off into a three house estate. Numbers still need to be placed in ascending order from left to right all the way down the street in the same way even though a fence has been built in the middle. The ends of each street already contain a permanent fence. Established estates can be split down further as long as they haven't been used to complete a city plan. More on city plans later. Bis, duplicate a number of an adjacent house in the same estate on a street. Write bis on the duplicated house as a reminder. The number on the street can be duplicated multiple times in a row if multiple bis effects are used. Then cross off the lowest number in the bis section starting with zero. These are negative endgame points. Real estate agent, check off the lowest number in any real estate column. This increases the value of each estate of that size at the end of the game. For example, this estate is three houses big, so is currently worth four points. Landscaper, cross off the leftmost empty tree on the same street that the number was written on. This will increase your endgame points. Pool manufacturer, cross off the lowest numbered pool. But you can only cross off a pool if the number you added this turn was added to a house with a pool. Once all players have done the number and effect, flip over three new cards and start a new turn. Now let's look at city plans in more detail. The middle section has the goal the players need to achieve and the bottom shows the number of points for achieving the goal. These require you to have a number of estates of varying sizes. For example, here you need three estates, each of three numbered houses. Now the estates you use to fulfill a goal could be across multiple streets, but each estate can only fulfill one city plan. To show an estate has been used and can't be used again, cross out the fence above the house in that estate. The advanced city plan cards are described in the rulebook. A few examples include these, where you need to have your fifth house with a bis or your seventh temp agency. If a pool is used to complete an advanced city plan, it does not rule out its attached house from being part of an estate to complete another city plan. The player or players that complete the city plan first write the higher number in the corresponding city plan sheet on their sheet. And the first player to complete a city plan could choose to reshuffle the construction cards back into three piles of 27. Once a city plan has been completed, flip the card over. All players can now earn the lower number when the city plan is completed. If playing with the advanced rules, players may also build a roundabout as well as writing a number and applying the effect. This is placed in an empty house, splitting the street in two, meaning a new set of ascending numbers can start from the house to the right of the roundabout. Cross off the lowest number in the roundabout box. Players can only build two roundabouts per game. And the game will end and players will score once a player completes one of the following three things. Crosses their third building replacement refusal box, achieves all three city plans, 
always built all houses on all streets. Add up the points gained from city plans and add it to the sheet. Add up the points from the lowest visible number on each park of the three streets. For example, this player can see 4, 4 and 6, so their total is 14 points. Score the lowest visible number in the pool section, in this case 9 points. The player or players that have crossed the most temporary workers gain the number of points shown at the bottom of the box. 7 points for first place, 4 points for second and 1 point for third. All players get the points on a tie. Score each estate on your board depending on the lowest value number showing in the estate scoring box. For example, each estate here, one house big is worth 3 points, 2 houses big is worth 3 points, 3 houses big worth 4 points, etc. Add the totals at the bottom of the sheet. Players enter the lowest visible number for the BIS box and add the total to the lowest visible number for the roundabout and building permit refusal boxes. Players add points to the blue sections and subtract penalty points from the red sections. The player with the most points wins with the tiebreaker going to the player with the most estates. If it's still a tie, tie players check to see who has the most one house estates, then two house estates, etc. And that's Welcome to a Flip and Fill game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it, and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter at JTR Podcast to find my blog and podcast at jtrpodcast.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue. Until next time, you are welcome to hit subscribe.